The flowing time, the expanding space, I shall make it all mine one day. Let's talk about Sinnoh Remakes. It is a heavily discussed topic this year, being the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. And the question on everyone's mind is, are we getting the Sinnoh Remakes or nah? I, of course, don't have the answer to that question, but I do have some really cool fan projects and concept art revolving around everyone's favorite region, at least this year. But actually, Pokemon Platinum is one of my favorite Pokemon games of all time, so needless to say, I am pretty excited at the fact that Pokemon remakes might happen for Sinnoh, while also very, very nervous because... Sword and Shield added some features that I wouldn't necessarily want to see in Sinnoh Remakes, but a lot to discuss here in terms of the graphics, the gameplay, the story, and of course the features that would potentially be added into the Gen 4 Remake, so let's dive into it. And the first thing I want to take a look at is Twin Leaf Town in Unreal Engine. This is absolutely beautiful looking. Twin Leaf Town is of course the first town in the Sinnoh region with the nice little wooden houses, the flowery pastures. Of course, this I don't think is something that Pokemon would go for. It looks a little bit too realistic in my opinion and Pokemon games have always been a little more on the cartoony side. But nonetheless, it is really impressive that Games can look this beautiful nowadays, and I guess it is a little curious to think what if a spin-off Pokemon game did choose to go for a more realistic approach. Like, I can't imagine the current Pokemon models running through this grass. It just really wouldn't fit with it. They'd have to completely overhaul Pokemon models and maybe make them look like something more closer to Detective Pikachu. And yeah, that's just something I don't see Pokemon doing. But it's always cool to see fans do it, so shout out to PapaBeard88 on Reddit. I'm assuming that's the man himself that made it. Many Doors says, take notes, Game Freak. That's probably my biggest issue with them nowadays. They're too afraid to innovate. Although I don't think all the rush from TCP is helping. And yeah, that's definitely a big issue. Even coming into Gen 4 remakes, I feel like a lot of us are expecting a game this year because that's what we've gotten used to is a new release every single year and even last year we didn't get a full new game but we did get the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra so there's definitely this pressure on Game Freak to pump out a game every year and because of that they have to cut corners and basically some things don't end up being as good as expected. Pokemon Platinum had one of the best post games out there so it'd be pretty sad to see Diamond and Pearl remakes not have a post game at all or like the Battle Frontier oh man they totally teased us with the Battle Frontier back in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. That project better be freaking complete. It's been like eight years, Game Freak. That's enough time, right? But while I don't think Game Freak would really take notes from this visual style or take a more realistic approach, I do agree that it'd be nice to see them take a couple more risks, not be so afraid to switch it up. Speaking of, Let's Go were technically the first Pokemon games on the Switch, and they really did switch up the formula and I've been hearing some rumors that perhaps the Diamond and Pearl remakes will actually take the style of the Let's Go games. Instead of getting Let's Go to Johto, we might just get Let's Go Diamond and Pearl. Or as Jack or Jacksk on Reddit puts it, Let's Go Riolu and Pachirisu potentially. No, God! For one thing, they could have Mega Evolutions in it, which I know is something a lot of people have been wanting to come back. Because if they go for the Sword and Shield approach, then that means most likely we're going to have Gigantamaxing in the Sinnoh region instead. And from what I've gathered online, the consensus seems to be that most people don't really like Dynamaxing. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the feature, but if they ended up looking like this, I wouldn't really mind it all that much. Just look at this Torterra. Man's got the whole Mount Coronet on his back. We got Infernape looking like an absolute sage mode beast right here. Kind of reminds me of Jiraiya from Naruto, which is why I think I said sage mode. That's just really cool, man. And then Empoleon, probably my least favorite of the three starters. Uh, well, even in this Gigantamax form, I, I, I don't know about this one, but shout out the Baldinosaur for these amazing artworks. I've seen them floating around a lot on different threads, but I'm pretty sure this is the original artist considering, you know, his thanks and everything, asking 
Uh, which one do you like to see next? Oh, Johto on the way. Wait a minute. This was 2019. Oh, he also drew the uh, Diamond and Pearl beta Pokemon. Yo, that would be interesting, actually, if the beta sprites somehow came back as regional variants, like Sinnohan forms. Because I'm sure that that's a thing that they would bring in to Sinnoh remakes. And even if they don't exactly look like this, they could definitely take inspiration from those beta designs, at least for some of the Pokemon. Like, come on, man. This Cranidos is honestly way cooler looking than the actual one. I would love to see it. Speaking of new designs, though, I've seen these specific artworks of the main characters pop up a whole bunch, and I couldn't quite find who the original artist was. The signature is in the corner there, but I've seen so many people that cover, like, Pokemon leaks use these on their thumbnails, and... They do look pretty legit. I gotta say, I like the new Lucas, I think was his name. I don't know, the old one always had a bit of a Kalos vibe to me. Man looks like he's scouting out for the nearest baguette. This look definitely fits with the Sinnoh region having a lot of snowy areas, him being more well-dressed for the weather, and the scarf, I think, having a little, what looks like a Mega Stone on it. Again, I don't think Mega Evolutions are ever going to make a comeback, especially not in a mid-generation game. Like, they're most likely going to stick with Dynamaxing, which is really weird from a story perspective. Because the Galar region explains it like Eternatus brought about the power spots where the Raid Dens were. So, how would they explain that in Sinnoh exactly? Would the Dynamax power come from Giratina instead or Dialga and Palkia? I don't know. It just seems weird to add it in. Here we've got a potential Dawn concept art redesign, and she definitely looks more well-dressed for the weather as well. I always found it weird that even in Pokemon Platinum, Dawn didn't have like leggings or anything in that freezing cold weather, man. Then again, I do see a lot of girls in real life be going out to the club in like 30 degree weather in miniskirts, so... Next, we're going to take a look at Victor 01's DeviantArt page. He's actually done a whole bunch of redesigns. Actually, I think these are more based around Pokemon Masters, the Cygnus suits in that game, uh, which are more so based on a specific Pokemon. So, for example, this would be Gardenia if her ace Pokemon was a Ferrothorn. But I honestly kind of like that just as a gym leader outfit. I really like this outfit for Maylene, actually, with the uh, snowy jacket and the Galarian style gym leader clothes. Of course, this is based off if her main ace Pokemon was Pessimian. We got Rourke in a Carpink Cygna suit. I don't know if Rourke would really be wearing this many layers. I, I guess Sinnoh is pretty cold overall, so it would be cool in this remakes if like everybody has the more warm clothes aesthetic. We had Alola, which was a mainly warm tropical region, so Victor has actually done a whole collection of Diamond and Pearl remake redesigns. Starting off with the main characters again here, we got Lucas. There's a 2015 and a 2020 updated version here, plus the original for comparison with the Galar Gym insignia there, as well as a Mega Stone on his... Uh, wrist sort of mega evolutions are not happening man stop teasing me please i like this redesign overall though the scarf looks a lot better uh definitely better than the 2015 version i gotta say which was still a little bit on the french wee oui, wee oui side oh yeah i kind of forgot about barry not as big of a fan of the shoes with the uh black socks showing there in puerto rico we'd always call him brinca chalco it's definitely not a good look for you barry Victor's concept also has him in the cutoff pants, but they look a little bit better here because he doesn't have the black socks underneath. That 2015 design though, dude, with the buck teeth. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. Uh, but he does have a little pin on his scarf there for the Mega Stone, and I do like the inside button-up shirt in the hoodie. Actually, this might be my favorite design for Lucas here. Or wait, Barry. Oh my gosh, I'm getting their names all jumbled up here. And then, of course, we've got Don, which, again, not very well-dressed for Sinnoh back in the original 2006 design. 2020, I mean, she still got the skirt. Might have to pick Chimchar as your starter to keep those thighs warm there. But, again, I like the sort of baggy, big jacket look to it and the scarf redesign as well. The hat still maintains that Pokeball logo in there, but it's a little more subtle. Not quite on the nose as it was back in the original or the 2015 drawing uh plus the bag really really cool and the boots yeah everything about this design i actually dig except for maybe it looks a little too much like marnie or at least the color scheme with the black pink in your area 
The people in Pokemon of Sinnoh are like their homes. They seem cold on the outside, but inside they're very warm. I would love to see it actually happen in the Sinnoh remakes, like if everybody was dressed a little bit more for the weather of the region. Except for the swimmers, of course. Why does her bag also look like a butt? I see my boy Flint over here, yo! <laughs> Man's looking straight out of One Piece with the open chest. Uh, I don't know if I like the whole uh, leather straps thing going on there. Cynthia, though. Definitely more cutesy and cartoony like the new style Pokemon seems to go for. I do like the design of the outfit, but I feel like we're kind of losing the edge of Cynthia, though. Like, she always seemed a little more older and mature. And with this design, she just seems like one of the kids as well, and I don't know if I like that for Cynthia. She always did seem to be more of a grown-up compared to your main character, so... Uh, <laughs> like I said, Victor's done artwork for like a whole bunch of characters here, so I'm not gonna take a look at all of them because like, no hate on Crasher Wake. I just, I don't think he would wear a cape like that. Uh, but I do want to take a look at these Team Galactic admins because I think Team Galactic is something that would definitely get an overhaul in the remakes. And this design, I actually really like. I have no idea what her name is. Maybe Juniper? J Jupiter, probably? Oh, it actually is Jupiter. Okay. Uh, anyway, it looks a lot more outer space-like, which fits for Team Galactic. Even though this did have a very futuristic look to it, this definitely screams more outer space to me. Aside from maybe the galactic tattoo on the thigh there, I, I don't know, this is a little risky for Pokemon. I also found this art for what Cyrus might look like in the remake, and I couldn't find the original artist, but their signature is down there in the corner, so maybe one of you guys know and can let me know in the description. I got space, time, and whatever Giratina is, what you got, bro? Come at me. Finally, we got another look for Cynthia and Cyrus. This is actually a bit of an alternate universe concept here. If Cynthia became an evil dictator, I'd let that dictator step all over me. Definitely a more mature, menacing look to this one here, which I felt is what was lacking from the previous concept we looked at. Uh, but I guess it is for an evil Cynthia, so it makes sense. I don't know, I just feel like Cynthia's not quite evil, but she's always been a little more threatening. I hope that the Diamond Pearl remakes, if they happen, aren't as easy as Sword and Shield. Even though they probably will be, it'd be nice if we could get, like, at least a difficulty option, like we had in Black and White. We also got Nice Guy Cyrus, again, alternate universe, where the roles are reversed, so Cyrus was actually the good guy. Man's hair is looking like mine right now. It's, it's not good, dude. Now, the final thing I want to discuss today is actually a completely different Sinnoh remake, that is already in the making by one Silas SH on Reddit, and it is Platinum with Gen 5 graphics, so let's take a look at this uh, little gameplay footage here. And as you can see, it's not terribly different from the original Diamond Pearl. Actually, I, I guess it's been a while since I played it, so this might be really different. Here is Eterna Forest in the Gen 5 style, where it's a lot easier to distinguish the differences between this and like the original Gen 4 version. Definitely did not have these wooden logs that you could travel through like in uh, Pinwheel Forest in black and white. And this is my favorite part coming up right here. When he steps up to the old chateau, the camera angle change is really nice. You can see the whole building there. And we also have a little footage from nighttime with a really cool looking firefly effect. So, like I said, this is a work in progress, and he does regularly post updates on Reddit, so check it out. Here is Eterna City again, with the changing camera angle there. Nice new looking tile sets there, and I believe when you head into the Galactic Building here in just a second, the camera angle also changes to zoom out and show you a little bit more of the whole ring rotating and everything. Oh, we gotta zoom in here too? Dang, okay, that's pretty cool, man. Oh my god, the music, man! It's bringing back the memories! The Minecraft lily pads! Oh, I just realized what route this is. It's got like the Spiritomb thing and the Pokemon Tower, or Lost Tower, whatever it's called. With the Cherry Blossom theme though. Whoa, that fountain too! That definitely wasn't there in the original. And there's one more project I want to show you guys. Another DS ROM hack in the making. Pokemon Legends Arise, Trinity Enigma. Bit of a mouthful of a name there, but it is basically a fan game of Heart Gold, which tells an original story set in an alternative scenario to that of Diamond Pearl Platinum. So it's basically 
part gold being made into the Sinnoh region, which means that you've got things like Pokemon following behind you. This is being made by Ad Astra GL, who you can also find on Reddit, and he also posts updates pretty frequently. So let's take a look at some footage here from Celestic Town, work in progress. No music on this one, it seems, but there's a whole new sprite there for Dawn as well as Metacham following behind. And look at that zoom out, man. That is so cool. Here is another version of Route 209. No cherry blossoms to be seen, but the Pokemon Tower has been turned into a giant windmill, it seems. And finally, Platinum Remake. This is how I wait for Sinnoh's comeback. Tell me this doesn't represent all of us right now. So again, that is Pokemon Legends Arise development just started last year, so I'm not sure exactly when there will be a release of it, but it looks really promising so far, especially the Pokemon following you, man. That is something I always want in my Pokemon games. So we got a lot to look forward to this year, whether it's the official remakes happening or not, we, we still don't actually know, or these really awesome looking fan projects. I am really excited for Pokemon's 25th anniversary, no matter what we end up getting, like we already got Pokemon Snap coming, it's gonna be a crazy year for Pokemon fans, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already to stay tuned for all the updates and news regarding what might be released in the future, and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Also, let me know what you think of Sinnoh Remakes. What do you want to see in them, and what do you want to not see? Like, for example, if you don't want Dynamax to be in it, because I don't think anyone wants that. <laughs>